stride. Well, let's sail for a little bit first, you know? Well, everybody, welcome back to Quote the Raven. I'm really excited today. I'm excited for a couple reasons. One is I got a new hat. Um, I got two new hats, but my kid stole the other one, and that represented a really cool trip that I took. Um, and that will be for a future episode. But today, what I'm really excited about is that we got to sail with Tom Gilbert. Tom is a board member of Stride Adaptive Sports, located in upstate New York. And um, we'll let Tom tell you about it, but the mission of Stride is to educate and empower individuals with special needs in life-changing sport and recreation programs to sustain healthy, active, and fun lifestyles. Their vision is to build a community with equal opportunity and access for sport and recreational activities. No one should be left behind because of a disability. Stride's focus is youth programming in individual lifetime sports and a belief that it is possible to remove boundaries, fulfill dreams, enhance self-esteem, and empower youth with disabilities through the participation in sport and recreational activities. You probably know from previous videos of mine that I have been a proponent of making um, sports, you know, specifically sailing and skiing, more accessible. Getting everybody we can involved in sports that that last a lifetime is really important. And um, I hope that this little video will help us get there. Thank you. Appreciate you coming sailing today. Um, you represent uh, an organization called Stride, Stride Adaptive Sports. Can you kind of give us a little background of what Stride is and also how you became involved with Stride? Sure. So, well, the Stride today does probably over 8,000 lessons with over 400 volunteers in 14 different activities. The one everybody's most notable about is skiing, and they do a lot of those. Uh, but what uh, the background behind it is is really part of the amazing story. I wonder if we should just come up a little bit further. We can tack anytime you want. Looks like we might run out of wind shortly. Let's see. I don't think we'll run out of water as we go down here. Right? No, I don't think so either. The origin of Stride was at that time a very young uh, teacher in a school district who said, I want to take somebody with some physical disabilities and I want to take them skiing. And her supervisor said, that was not a very good idea. That just doesn't sound uh, sound. That's not what we should be doing. Uh, and she went up the line and up the line and she actually got somebody in the school district who said, yes, we can, we can do that. You can take that individual who walks around on crutches and a walker and let's see what they think of skiing. And that was a pretty, uh, I think, uh, it's come about. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we're running out of wind. Ready to out? Yep, ready to out. So somebody in the school district took a really big chance to, to give this individual an opportunity to go skiing. And again, the question is, they ask is, why does he want to go ski? Why does he want to go skiing? And I think the answer was, why does any individual want to go skiing? You know, they're an individual first, and they're uh, somebody with a disability second, and they wanted to try it. Uh, and from that, the, you know, that was that was some over 30 years ago to have it have grown to what it is today and I, I was really surprised because I have seen I have known about the skiing aspect of it as a ski patroller in the ski industry I've known about the skiing and it wasn't until I saw the website which we'll link in this description that there are 
14 different activities that you have. Each one of those, I assume, is run by a volunteer. All volunteers. So again, over 400 volunteers. We now have uh, three and a half paid staff people. Uh, and it wasn't until probably eight years ago that we had our first paid paid individual. And that was uh, Mary Ellen, our, uh, our founder. And somebody gave us a grant that said, you know what, if you leave your teaching job, I will match your your teaching salary so that you can do this full time because this is just such an important function. So one of my big things has always been with both skiing and sailing and other sports is is accessibility. How do we define accessibility? How does how does Stride define accessibility? How does it dis define define you know disability in terms of uh, access to these different events and sports and things? Uh, well, we have a um, we have an application, and we review the application. There's really no pre-qualifications. If the need is there, we're ready. Has skiing been your most successful? Uh, it's certainly the largest program. It's what started Stride, and it's what we're most known for. I think what makes Stride unique from other uh, adaptive ski programs is our our stride doesn't end in the wintertime, and we, we branched out into spring, fall, and summer activities. One thing about skiing, the sailing, what we're doing today, these are activities that people can enjoy for a lifetime, right? It's like, I've always said, like, if, if you're a baseball player or a football player specifically in high school, usually the last game you play is that last game of your high school career. But these sports are lifetime enjoyment that you can do with your family and and so providing that accessibility is hugely important what kind of modifications do you make or are made for your for your students yeah I, I, well for starters I think you hit an important point you know it's not about competition it's about self-competition and we always say um, people win when they've done the best that they can uh, whether it be skiing or or bowling or sailing or swimming so they're really competing against themselves and their own abilities. I've always thought personally that the limitations that people feel are usually limitations that other people have placed on them, right? Oh, you're, you have one leg, you can't ski. And we all know that that's a fallacy. Do you guys help with that process of having them realize, self-realize that we need to tack now? <laughs> I love the question. Yeah. Over she goes. So that's that's the fun part of of, of working with um, our athletes is every you know they're more driven to be to succeed. You know some people might say I've fallen skiing. I don't want to do this anymore. The first time they fall and everybody falls. But our athletes are, are really driven and say, no, I want to do this because people think that I, I won't be able to. So they're really driven. Uh, and when they succeed, and, and almost all of them do, they're pretty proud of themselves. Their self-esteem increases. And, and for many of them, they do better in school, too. I think just notice it. for me as a lifelong educator, self-esteem and self-confidence is half the battle. Once you can get people feeling good about themselves, feeling that they can accomplish something, they usually do. Um, what kind of outreach do you, you do? So you said there's an application process, so people are coming to you. People hear about Stride, they come to you. Or maybe parents of children come to you. Do you guys do outreach? I'm gonna move on this side of the boat as we start to heal here. Is there something that you guys do particularly for outreach? Most of them I think are coming from referrals. Okay. You know, people see us uh, skiing being an easy one. People see us on the mountain and they say, you know, I have a relative. Would they qualify? You know, cousin, niece, nephew, grandchild. Um, or uh, family members are skiing and say, Bria, I wish, you know, my son and daughter could join us as well. And uh, so I guess a lot of it's referral and just people noticing us in the community. What kind of. Uh cost to families is there? Uh, so many of our programs are free. 
Uh, sometimes there's a minimal registration, $25 for a weekend of camping. Uh, skiing, uh, well, it, we are all volunteers and Stride doesn't get paid. Um, there's a minimal amount that goes to the ski area, but it's probably, you know, 20% the cost of a traditional lesson, uh, skiing and lesson and rentals. Okay, yeah. so you want to come about again? Yeah. Hope We're going to tack. Hope she goes. So I, I take it that, you know, for instance, I know Jiminy Peak is one of the mountains that you guys work with, right? Um, as a disclaimer, I am on the pro staff of the ski patrol at Jiminy Peak. But so they work with you and the agency to get these people skiing. Yeah, and, and, and what they provide and the don donations they give is just incredible. Uh, Jiminy Peak has been a very strong sponsor uh, at every turn when we're looking for, for any assistance um, in, in so many ways. So I did notice on your website, although I did not see it on the calendar, that you also offer sailing up at uh, Saratoga Lake, part of the Saratoga Lake Sailing Association, I think they're called. Uh, actually, so we've had sailing in three locations. Uh, the first one was uh, Camp Ginger Cook in YMCA, and then Saratoga, I've got a club visit, I'm not sure the name. Saratoga Lake Sailing, Lake sailing. yeah. Uh, and we had one in New Rochelle, New York as well. Oh, that far south? Yeah. How, so that, that begs the question, how far do you extend? Well, uh, it really depends on where there seems to be interest in volunteers. Can we tack? We can go. Yes, on. yes, absolutely. So our sea state's a little bit rough today, so we are swapping sides each way, which is a little different than some of the other videos. But it's actually very nice sailing. Um, so we had, uh, in that case, we had uh, an organ, uh, one of our volunteers, level three, instructor, adaptive, uh, lived in that vicinity and made arrangements with a New Rochelle group that says, can we use your boats? Nice. Uh, uh, we had a bowling program in New York City for a couple of years because there were some volunteers and interest. And we do get a lot of uh, athletes, uh, skiing athletes especially, from the New York City area. That's really interesting. Has Do you think the... Uh kind of the renewed prominence or maybe the new prominence of, of the Paralympics has helped your program? Uh, well, we do have uh, a Paralympic sled hockey, sled hockey team. Oh. And, um, and we sent somebody for a uh, Paralympics air rifle. Nice. Two years ago. But, but, but it, wasn't, it wasn't how he got started. In, yeah. Right. Because Paralympics... Um, was never televised before the last couple of years, right? So I guess I'm wondering is, are there people who are seeing this and saying, wow, where can I find access to some of this stuff? You wanna come about? Uh, yeah, I wonder if we should try to go downwind. All right. What do you think? Yeah, let's go downwind. So, so I have to say, I'm a little bit embarrassed, Tom, because I pass the Stride office all the time, but now, but I never realized I did. So where is Stride located? So the office is now located in West Sand Lake. Uh, and That's that, New York. Uh, New York State, yep. yep, just south of Albany. Uh, and it wasn't East Green, Greenbush, uh, also south of Albany. Uh, but we, we thought about this, we were always renters. And we thought that if we had our own facility um, for events, that uh, it would be able to generate more interest in raising funds uh, and grants and it really was hugely successful we have some indoor activities uh, we have a workout gym with special equipment um, yoga with special special training and so it's been a, a pretty big success to actually have our own facility for the first time after 30 years and all this stuff I, I would imagine is donations and, and contributions we the do yeah, we've got um, a lot. Again, we don't do any uh, state funding, so it's all grants and personal contributions. So when did you move into your new facility? I want to say that was about three years ago. And, it, you know, it was a, it was a kind of a tough decision to, to take that plunge and, and have a mortgage. Um, but it, it turned, out, turned, turned out well, uh, and especially with COVID, with so many programs, uh, firing up at interest, it was, a, it was a great decision. Well, it's a good question. How, how did COVID 
affect you guys, both positively and or negatively? Uh, well, nationwide, uh, the number of volunteers is getting tougher and tougher. So that was the biggest, biggest scream. We ran, uh, we run a bike bike camp, and we had to cancel. Uh, normally, we get about uh, 40, 50 students, and we had to cancel 10 of them because we didn't have enough volunteers. So that's the biggest impact that we've seen from COVID, and we're not not recovering from that yet. Okay. So if you want to volunteer, oh my gosh, we always need volunteers. You do work with wounded warriors as well. We do. That was another interesting transition because we were always working with students under the age of 18. And because they became aware of our skiing program, they, they said, can, can you teach skiing? And that was another you know, turning point for the board. Do we want to do this? But it turned out to be a, a really good decision. It, it gave us recognition. It gave us additional funding. And we were able to combine the Wounded Warriors uh, camping program with with our athlete camping program and matching wounded warriors disabilities with the same disabilities as the children and that was a fascinating experience. So one of the things I noticed because when I was looking through the website and I really uh, I encourage people to do it because it's really very moving. Um, when I read through a lot of the, the bios of your program directors, your volunteers that are on there most of them seem to have children who were part of the program, who were special needs, who, who and then became volunteers. Did you find that to be, uh, oh, we're all over the place. you find that to be fairly common? Uh, there are there are several of them that join in that manner. I mean, you become part of a, it's a bit of a family, you know, and so uh, the parents, the children, and the volunteers all kind of mesh into one, and that happens. It's kind of a fun way to, to stay stay involved. So a lot of people, their their children will have graduated, successfully graduated for the program, and they they still enjoy all the people. So they said, I'm going to hang out, and I'm going to continue to do this. So at about this time, Tom and I started talking about individual stories, not in any kind of specifics, no names, but for privacy and in the case that somebody might recognize themselves, we decided that it would be best not to, not to publish those stories. I would say that if, if you want to know more about these stories, get involved. Reach out to Stride, volunteer, bring your level of expertise to these children. It will not go unrewarded. Thank you. As an organization, what Stride really can do.